Neuto Box Cutter 716 is the experimental font cutter. Font cutter is a work in progress, so sometimes with its ability to automatically solve, it can get a little bit wayward. So we'll just jump into our 3D view and shift A at a text object, and we'll press G, X, and move it over to the left. And we'll just type in box cutter. Old habits die hard, I can't stop testing the letter T. So we will select our font and we will switch to custom and we'll press C in order to switch this to be the uh, custom shape, replacing the logo. And we'll also make this a slice and we will just draw some box cutter logos. For some reason, I always press X, old habits die hard. In fact, there's not even a need for me to um, press any hotkeys because I've pre-configured box cutter already by setting it to slice and custom to draw exactly what I want. And then every time I'm drawing it, I'm pressing spacebar to apply the operation. You can see that as I use it over and over due to the complexity of the word and the mesh itself, it can get a little bit heavy, but font cutter is just one of those things that we added just kind of um, to just complete this version. Uh, however, curve support is the next thing on the list but we wanted to experiment with um, attempting to have a cutter that is able to be automatically solved prior to its application, which is what brought this tool to be. So while we're able to cut it this time, there is a chance that you could run into very strange issues when using fonts as your cutters. So we were able to make all of these cuts work. However, I will just jump through a mod scroll to just grab a cutter. And if we look at this in edit mode, we can see that the solve for this possibly wasn't the, the best. And this is because we let it solve as Blender would just generally solve where the edges are just connected to the nearest logical point that it could find on the computer. So sometimes it is better to solve these things you know, manually as a human being because you can make better judgment calls. And to show that in action, I will shift right click, place my cursor and we will press S and scale down a plane and we'll just duplicate our font and move it down on the Y, tap into edit mode and ensure that we encompass our shape. And I will take this moment to use the object menu to convert this to a curve. And so now we have a curve of the box cutter logo. And let's get in here and just put a few loop cuts in. In fact, I actually thought of this right before jumping to the segment on the previous take that you know just adding some loop cuts would actually be smarter than a dice on this so we may have to come up with a per uh, letter system but you know sometimes i like to um, come up with these ideas on the fly so we will just select the first we'll select the curve then we'll select the plane and with spacebar we'll just use knife project one of my favorites and we don't even need to look around and make sure it cut through we can just press p and separate the selection and just delete the plane, delete the cutter. And if we look at this, this is actually much cleaner than what we ever would have got just allowing it to solve. And this is actually what I intend for font cutter to be in the future. However, everything is always a baby step allowing for room in the future with improvement. So if we just bring another cube down here and we scale it, we can just move this cube here, select our special font, press C. And we of course run into an issue with scaling. When it comes to custom cutter, you want to always apply your scale or else custom cutter will have issues with something to do with this matrix math. But now we're cutting in something just so much cleaner than what we were actually getting before. I may use ingons, but I have standards as far as what is a quality ingon. You can't just come at me with any old ingon and expect me to accept it. Um, you know, with ingons, there has to be a certain flow to it to ensure that the conversion process down the road is also something very easy. And also it's capable of receiving certain modifiers without any issue. Uh, anytime that you're using ingons and you're unable to put a bevel, you might want to, you know, check the flow of the geometry because that's one of the main things that will stand in the way of you being able to get the result that you want when it comes to you know beveling and using ingons. Ingons are especially good when it comes to planar forms, but can definitely get troublesome whenever they begin curving. 
So this isn't actually what the result of uh, the mesh looks like. That's actually the font itself. But if we were to take this mesh and just control A, convert it to mesh, and use hard ops for a moment to use clean mesh, this is actually what we would have got for our cutter. So comparing this top result, which is actually what we get when we just do a little bit of work cleaning up the font versus what we actually get just allowing the solver to solve. I mean, these T's will forever be questionable. And the fact that it allowed these Booleans to go through is just a miracle into its, unto itself. And some things a weld modifier just can't solve. In fact, for this case, um, more than likely points would have had to have been created and added in order to just really get that area flowing again. And for me, I find it easier to just send lines straight down the middle. But that, in a nutshell, is Font Cutter.